Hey, what's up everybody? What's up horror fans? It's Jason, coming at you again on another Wicked Wednesday. Um, yeah, I was going to do a review of Extro 2, because I wanted to start doing sequels, but um, <clears throat> I watched that film again and I really don't think I need to put you guys through that. That's a pretty rough film. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. Don't, don't watch that. But uh, I got my big cup of coffee. I'm ready to do a, do something different today. I was I was gonna do a little newer movie, so uh, get out your black nail polish and your Fallout Boy. Talking about Jennifer's Body. Uh, came out 2009, directed by Karen Kus Kusuma. Hope I pronounced that right. Of course, stars Megan Fox. She's there on the front. Um, another person that stars that. Uh, but I think it's really cool is this guy named Kyle Gallner. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. And he seems like he's done a lot of work in the horror genre. He's in the new Nightmare on M Street remake coming up, which I know all of you guys are pumped up about that. He's also in The Haunting in Connecticut uh, and th this movie, Jennifer's Body, of course. And he was also in the movie Red, directed by Lucky McKee, or... Uh, at least Lucky McKee was the original director and he was dismissed and replaced. But uh, Red is a really cool movie if you ever want to check that out. It's not a horror movie, but it's a really good movie. And Lucky McKee is an awesome director. Really, really underrated director. Probably one of the best working directors now, in my opinion. But um, yeah, Jennifer's Body, basic plot outline. Uh, we have these two girls in high school, really good friends. One's a... Uh, like on the flag squad or drill team, whatever the hell you call it, and another one is kind of like a nerdy girl. Been best friends since they were young girls, and uh, one of them decides that she wants to go to see this band play. Some band she heard of and she wants to go see, and uh, so she wants to drag the other one with her. So they go see this band play, and it turns out that this band uh, has made a pact with the devil, and in order for them to become popular, they need to sacrifice a virgin. So that's what they plan to do when they come to this small town called uh, Devil's Falls or whatever the hell the town's called. Devil's something. Uh, whatever. But um, yeah, the band comes to town and that the, the bar that they're playing in actually burns down and then they all have to run out. And then Jennifer... Megan Fox's character actually goes with these guys, with the band, and they go and they plan to sacrifice her. Well, Jennifer's not a virgin, so uh, this thing, it, it doesn't go quite as planned, and it kind of turns Jennifer into a monster, and from that point on, she starts eating people, <laughs> which is pretty cool, but and she starts eating people, and the band does become really popular because uh, the rumor gets around that they helped a lot of people escape from the fire um, and saved a lot of people's lives and stuff but of course isn't the case but uh, that's just a basic plot outline I don't want to get too deep in it it's really really basic plot um, what I like about this movie I think that uh, that, it, that it will actually get cult status in the future it, it just seems like one of those movies that 20 years from now there will be some nerd like me talking about this movie saying how awesome it is and I think it's a good movie I wouldn't say it's awesome but I think it's a good movie it's a good watch it has a lot of positive qualities a lot of negative qualities as well um, it's, it's kind of like a horror comedy I think it actually manages to pull off the horror comedy a lot of films have tried to do that and a lot have failed but I think this one manages to do it there's some decent laughs in there some decent scares there's some really good gore um a lot of it is CGI gore, I will say that, but it's it's not bad CGI in my opinion. They didn't overdo it like so many films do. I think the film was shot really well. I think uh, the director did a really good job. Um, I wasn't a big fan of, of Eon Flux. She also directed that. I wasn't a big fan of that. I actually just sold that DVD as I, as I hated it so much. I tried to like it. I watched it about three times and didn't like it, so I did give it a give it a shot uh, the soundtrack is really cool in this movie too uh, a, a lot of uh, metal on there and a lot of I don't know what you call it folky type songs really cool though I like the soundtrack a lot uh, let's see and it looks really good on blu-ray 
which is another plus. Which, if a new movie comes out today, it better look good on Blu-ray. But it looks good on Blu-ray. When I first saw it, I watched it on the computer, and I, I didn't think it looked all that great, but it looks better now. Okay, now the bad. Uh, this movie, Megan Fox, I think, was a really bad choice as far as the lead goes. She just... I think she's a bad actress, first of all, but I, the movie really tried to capitalize on her being the it girl in Hollywood, and I don't know, I guess they went on all these message boards and said that she was going to be nude in the movie, and I, from what I understand, that's why a lot of people saw it, because they wanted to see her nude, but I really don't think she's that attractive. I think she kind of looks like a, like a crack whore, um, but just my opinion. She's getting pretty fucking haggard, dude. She's like 21 years old, looking like she's 30-something, but just my opinion. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I think the other the other lead actress, I can't think of her name right off, but I think she does a good job. Uh, the Dialogue. This was written by Diablo Cody, of course, the infamous writer of uh, Juno. And I actually like Juno. I, I do. I thought it was a good movie, but this... She just went a little overboard with her dialogue. I think Diablo Cody is a really talented writer, and I think she has potential as a writer for dialogue at least. But uh, this one, she just went a little overboard with her pop culture references and stuff like that. So it, it, it really dates the movie when you use all of those uh, references to, you know, just things that are going on now. You, if you watch it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's They, they overdid it a little bit, but, you know. It's kind of like Tarantino, you know, Tarantino's done some movies where the dialogue was just absolutely horrendous, and I'm not going to mention those because I know you guys will probably leave negative comments, but <laughs> I do like Quentin Tarantino's movies, just not all of them. Um, and another thing this movie tried to do was capitalize on uh, lesbian overtones, the entire movie, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I really just think they were trying to take advantage of that and play it up and... That was like the whole reason everybody wanted to go see this movie. Not because it was a horror film or this or that, because they wanted to go see the, the uh, makeout scene between the two lead actresses. And I don't know. I mean, that's what if that's what makes a movie good for you, then, then so be it. But I don't really think it was necessary. And I don't know. It was just a little too much for me. But all in all, I'd say it's a decent film. I'd say give it a watch. It's definitely one of the better horror films to come out lately, I think. Um, excuse me. That's my telephone. Um, anyway, I'd uh, recommend that you guys go check it out. Thanks for watching.